Ukraine's locked in uncertainty, with both the government and the EU sending mixed signals over possibilities for future integration, as thousands remain on Kiev's main square demanding an agreement. A senior EU official signaled that all plans are on hold, and in this hesitant atmosphere, it's the U.S. that seems to have assumed the role of decision-maker, as Alexei Yurashevsky now reports. The free world is with you. America is with you. I am with you. John McCain's media conference in Kiev was rich in loud statements. Thinly veiled warnings to Moscow. We need to make it clear to the Russian government and Vladimir Putin that interference in the affairs of Ukraine is not acceptable to the United States of America or to any other free country in the world. Followed by explicit threats to Kiev. If the movement and membership in the EU is not achieved, that is going to have very serious effects here in Ukraine and in U.S.-Ukraine relations. He accused Russia of interfering, but many questioned why he was there in the first place. It's not the first time John McCain has been seen paying a visit to those the United States is currently lending its support to. He had a photo op with some Syrian rebel kidnappers. Now it's a world boxing champion turned politician. And McCain is not the only American politician in Ukraine. His appearance at Kiev's Independence Square was preceded by U.S. Assistant Secretary of State Victoria Nuland handing out cakes to the protesters. The reason they are there is bluntly because I think these people want to detach the Ukraine from Russia, as they see it. And they think that by supporting the protesters in Kiev, they might actually achieve that. The problem with that strategy is that it's simply not working. The bonds between the Ukraine and Russia economically and culturally and ethnically are simply too strong. And I think for American politicians and indeed European politicians to go to the Ukraine and to try to do that is actually very unwise and very dangerous and is simply exacerbating, making worse the differences, the divisions in the Ukraine, which are already very great. But as U.S. officials seem keen on pushing the EU association deal through, Brussels all but shut the door on signing it through a tweet from the man in charge of EU expansion. It's unclear whether it's a matter of the EU not budging on Ukraine's pleas for more financial help upon signing the agreement. The previous offer of 600 million euro was branded as humiliating by Yanukovych, or Brussels' rumored willingness to seize any talks with this government. This latest statement by the European official also puts huge pressure on Yanukovych because he's been saying all along continuously during press conferences and meetings with the European officials and the opposition that Ukraine would not step down from the Euro integration path and he was fully expecting to sign the Euro Association deal in the nearest uh, future. And with the news that this prospect is as remote as ever, the protesters' resolve is now also being hardened by a rallying cry from the newest arrivals from America. Alexei Roshevsky, RT, reporting from Kiev in Ukraine. We discussed the American senator's unwavering support for Ukraine's opposition rallies with international relations professor Mark Sleboda. He thinks their involvement is driven by anything but genuine concern over the authorities' handling of peaceful protest. Senator John McCain hasn't shown any such concern for uh, Occupy Wall Street protesters when they were brutally repressed in the United States and driven from uh, Zuccotti Park and from the main centers of uh, America, uh, cities across America, or with uh, uh, protesters in Europe against neoliberal austerity measures when tens of millions received like treatment over the last two years. Indeed, just this week in Spain, uh, in the United Kingdom, and in Italy, uh, we, we saw uh, police repression of uh, peaceful political dissent. John McCain hasn't uh, uh, shown any concern about this. What John McCain has always been concerned with is he views Russia as a geopolitical enemy of the United States and the greater uh, transatlantic community. And he, uh, like many Western officials, is viewing this through a Cold War lens of trying to separate Russia from the Ukraine uh, in order to, uh, in, in his mind, keep it in a permanently uh, geopolitically weakened state.